It's really kind of just gross. I'll walk down here and show you though. He's really having a good time. My brother has some chickens. And I just bumped a bunch of the larvae down here amongst the chickens. And they are happy right now. They are happy campers. I'd like to talk about the hive that was on those cinder blocks back there behind me. And this is the hive where I pulled the frames of honey uh, for the video on how to pull frames of honey from a hive back in May. I noticed there weren't very many bees in the hive at that time and it continued just to get weaker and weaker and finally the hive is no more. It just kind of bowed on out. Um, it was overtaken by wax moths. That's what this video is all about. I want to show you kind of what it's like when you have a wax moth infestation and so forth. But before I get started, I'd like to thank everyone all over the world for watching my videos and I hope you're subscribed to the channel. I'd also like to take a moment and, and tell you about a friend of mine who lost his shop and a lot of beekeeping equipment this past week here locally. Um, he does do a few YouTube videos. His name, the name of his uh, channel is Herding Bees with Rusty and Mike. And I'm going to put a link to a video he posted uh, after the shop burned down. You see what a great attitude he has, what a great guy he is. And I hope you'll check it out and maybe subscribe to his channel. He's trying to get this thing kicked off as well with his YouTube channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's see what it looks like when wax moths get in a beehive. Here in my backyard, I've uh, got this dead out here and I've left him alone for a while, not too long, but a little while. And this is what happens in Alabama in the summertime. And a hive that's got a lot of wax in it, dead out. See all those beautiful big grubs, worm looking things? Those are wax moth larva. This webbing right here is wax moth. It's just telltale sign we got that webbing of wax moths. If you look here, <clears throat> you see they've just kind of taken over. I just I noticed this thing was a dead out a while back. I just have not really pulled with it, haven't had a chance I was to go through it. I was thinking I would actually today utilize some of this comb and some stuff I'm doing, but look at that honey super this is a wasted honeycomb right here. So I'm just gonna have to get rid of this comb. Um, down in here you can see this is down in the brood chamber bottom box this hive has been one of my better hives for the past few years but I guess it just look at that all that nasty webbing so that my friends is what wax moths can do and it didn't take them long to do this either. Now, if you look right here, you'll see they, um, <clears throat> man, they put their larva, they like to attach it to the wood, the eggs, I guess, or whatever, however they do their life cycle. <clears throat> yeah, they, down. So they put these little cocoons or whatever on the edges. The cocoons are it's like a little indention in the wood right there. They can really kind of wipe out a, see all on the edge there? They did their damage. So anyway, I gotta get this stuff. I've got some other comb sitting out for the bees to clean up from the honey harvest a couple of weeks ago. I gotta get it processed and get it um, taken care of. Uh, one way to kill or to prevent, for sure prevent wax moths is to put your comb in the freezer first. Uh, that's hard for me to do. I almost have too much to do that with. If I see any damage just beginning, I'll do that sometimes. But then I use Paramoth um, for wax moth prevention. I use basically, if you look at the ingredients, and I'm going to double check these before I do, a, I may do a video on how I store my comb, but I use the ice wax or moth ice crystals at Walmart. It's basically the exact same thing as Paramoth, from what I understand. Um, and it's worked well for me for years. The problem with the, those crystals, those moth crystals is that they evaporate. So you've got to retreat 
or else you know they'll, they'll kill the wax moths um, for a, a time and then once it evaporates obviously there's no no benefit and they can still get in there but anyway just wanted to show you kind of what my blast moth damage can do to a hive this has been like i say one of my stronger hives over the last few years and now it's gone but i've got plenty more if you're going to be in beekeeping you're going to lose a few hives i'm not sure what happened here i i think i actually replaced the queen a few weeks back trying to save it uh, it just didn't work so and uh, it's kind of a total waste. I can't use the comb now because I let it go too long. Uh, but some of this comb, frankly, probably needs to be recycled anyway, so it's not a big deal. This happens when you're keeping bees. I'm taking these frames and just tossing them out here in my brother's burn pile up here, up at the farm. And uh, out here in the heat, these frames will probably just melt the wax on them. The uh, larvae can't seem to tolerate the heat. See the right here on the tailgate. See these right here that have just quit moving. Those will quit moving soon. It's really kind of just gross. I'll walk down here and show you though. He's really having a good time. My brother has some chickens. And I just bumped a bunch of the larvae down here amongst the chickens. And they are happy right now. They're happy campers. They've about got them all cleaned up right now. They are just so excited about this. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> man, there were quite a few of them crawling around just a couple of minutes ago, and these chickens have pretty much eliminated them. And so, they're happy right now. I'm going to go get in the deep box. There's some more. See them waiting to come and crawl out of the wax, out of the, uh, see them waiting to crawl out of the webbing there, and they're just picking them off one by one. So I'm going to go dump some more in here. They're going to have a field day with it. They love it. So I pulled the frames out of this deep box. All these nasty larvae in here. So what I do is I scrape all these off. Let me show you all this. Put it back there with the chickens. And I'm just going to watch them have fun. We're just gonna watch those chickens go to town here. Oh, just gonna scrape all this. See how they, they build their webbing on the edges. And all those larvae are hiding behind the webbing. I think a lot of them are. They're just gross. See the chickens over there. They're having fun with it. I think this is pretty cool, I think. I'm a little sick about this hot. Anyway, chickens over there having fun. Get all those nasty things off of there. It's just gross. So, beekeeping's fun when everything's going good, but there are some things about it that aren't so fun. This is one of them when you find dead outs that are full of wax moths or hive beetles. It's kind of a gross thing. Anyway, so you see what I'm doing with this. Giving the chickens a little feast. Well, I cleaned out this uh, box. Pretty much, I'm gonna clean it out some more, but chickens are just having an absolute feast over here, loving this. These are the old nasty frames out of this deep box. Um, so, I think that's about it. That's a good thing if you have chickens that you can do this with. The chickens will eat, it, eat them up, clean them up good. Instead of them just, you know, just killing them, just let the chickens eat them. It's a great feast for the chickens, and they are excited. My brother's chickens over here. Anyway, that's about it for today for this video. Once again, subscribe if you haven't. I'd appreciate it. On to the next video.